Captain oh captain We're on approach to the Ontaglio. <laughs> so far, they haven't detected us. Not they could with our stealth mode engaged. Captain Oko Masaki sat up from her bed, and she stretched her arms up above her. Her first mate, Myra Vespers, stood in the doorway to Oko's cabin. Myra was a live little thing, but despite her smaller size, she was as fierce as a drunken Okashian gladiator. Myra had short, straight-length purple hair that fell to her shoulders, a pair of bright orange eyes that were like sunsets, and a slight gap between her two front teeth. Myra wore a dark red form-fitting spacesuit that had a dark brown stripe running down the middle. Her laser pistol was on her hip in a brown leather holster. Myra also wore the helmet collar piece that could fabricate an energy space helmet in case of emergencies. Oko was taller than Myra was by a few inches, and she was much more muscular. She wore a dark purple spacesuit with a cream-colored stripe running up the center. She had whitish gray spiky hair and a pair of gleaming yellow eyes, which gave her a wolf-like visage. Myra also had a pair of pointed ears as well. Rather than have a conventional laser pistol like the rest of her space pirate crew, Oko had a pair of nanotech gauntlets over her hands. Ocular emitters were embedded in the palms of the gauntlets, which allowed her the ability to blast out energy projectiles or create energy blades of varying lengths. Oko also had the same model of helmet collar on. Have the lugheads been roused as well? Once the party starts, we won't have time to drag our feet. We have to get in and get out as quickly as possible. Oh, heck yeah, they're ready. You know, I, I can't believe we're finally gonna stick it to the Ryanite royal family. Whenever those bastards are trying to sneak across the galaxy, it's gonna be ours. Ha! Do you think our contact is right? Do you really think they try and smuggle some kind of secret treasure on a merchant ship? Oko rose to a stand, and she kept her face neutral for a moment. Within her, Oko's heart twisted and pulsated. Was it really going to be a treasure of some kind? Or was it going to be something else? It was the very idea of it being something else that sent horrid shivers up and down her spine. Within the depths of her mind, she prayed, Please let it be just treasure. Outwardly, Oko grinned from ear to ear, a mask she had gotten used to donning. She followed Myra out of her cabin. Who knows what goes through the mind of these pompous pricks. <laughs> but you're right. Whatever they're trying to sneak past Galactic Customs will be ours for the taking. And selling. <laughs> Not only will it make us filthy, stinking rich, but it will hurt the Ryanite royal family. A double win in my book. Ah, I guess some things can never be forgiven! Eh, hey, Captain? No, they certainly cannot. I'll never forgive Prince Yoki for what he did. Never in a million years. <sighs> Blowing up my first ship. <sighs> my one true love. Ah, Black Hole Eater. <laughs> I wish I could have seen her. She sounds amazing. Oko and Myra walked side by side down the hall, heading toward the bridge of the ship. <sighs> she was. Eight quad lasers, a mega hyperdrive booster, advanced cloaking, and the most bitter of losses. <laughs> she had a hot tub inside my cabin. I was super blessed to have been able to join your crew after you got a hold of this ship! The Quasar Dragon has felt more like a home to me than any other ship I've been on. Has it really been four years since the Gibraltar heist? Yep. <sighs> oh man, my mother was so mad when I left the family clan to become your new crewmate. I'm certainly glad you did. It's been a great four years. So much wealth gained and friends lost. It's been one hell of a ride. A ride that's far from over. Oko and Myra walked onto the bridge of the Quasar Dragon, a small, light space freighter ship. Only three people were on the bridge at the moment, the helmsman and two of the cargo acquisition specialists. 
The helmsman was none other than the super sweet, but also delightfully shy, Corinder Jacobs. Corinder, who often went by car for short, was a person of average height and weight. They had a shaved head, but a pair of light green eyebrows and enticing light green eyelashes. Carr had a pair of rosy pink irises, too. Carr wore a bright blue spacesuit with light green circles running up and down their pant legs. They sat behind the helm and operated the ship. The pair of cargo acquisitions specialists were indeed a pair of lugheads. While both were nice enough, well, nice for being pirates anyway, they were quite dumb. Whereas Myra was the brains, Ned and Dom were the meat, the muscle. Ned was the shorter of the two, matching Oko in terms of height. He had a large scar that started on his chin and wrapped all the way around his head, as if someone tried to can opener his skull. It ran up one cheek, curved under an ear, then rose at a steep angle so it ran above his other ear before it stopped an inch from making a full circle. Ned had bushy brown hair and blue eyes. He wore a brown spacesuit that had a bright yellow star on his right ass cheek. He gingerly had a laser rifle in his grip. Dom stood about seven foot eight inches tall and was from the planet Lazard. He had dark green scaly skin and a long and whipping tail, a pair of solid black eyes and a mouthful of razor sharp teeth. His tongue was bright pink. He wore a solid green spacesuit, which almost looked like he was naked. Dom loved tricking people into thinking he was naked. He had a pair of heavy laser pistols, one on each hip. Ned sat in the chair in front of the communications array, while Dom sat in front of the weapons terminal. The captain's chair was on a slightly raised platform, and beside it was the less impressive first mate stool. Captain on deck! Now the show can begin. Oko sat in her chair, and she stared at the large view screen just above where Carr piloted the ship. Three screens stretched across the front of the bridge, showing various vantage points and important technical data related to the ship. A large rectangular spaceship was soaring through the cosmos ahead of them, and it bore the name Ontaglio on its side. There she is, my friends. The Ontaglio, one of the most well-stocked luxury merchant ships in the Quadrant. Are you sure we can't take anything else besides the crate, boss? If we all took a handful, we could... If you took a handful, then how would you fire your rifle, dumbass? Well, we could use backpacks or something. I don't know, but there's so much wealth to be had. The only thing we're going after is the crate. Nothing else matters. I'm not sure what it is, but the royal family is trying to get it to the Dugo system without it going through galactic customs. That means a giant freaking payout, for sure. Forget everything else on the merchant vessel. In fact, I want you all to imagine the only other thing that the Antaglio is carrying besides the crate is socks. Uh, what kind of socks? It doesn't matter what kind of socks. She said forget about them. We just need to focus on the crate. What? It was a legitimate question. She said it was a luxury ship, so luxury socks could be nice. Ned, shut up about the socks. There aren't really socks on the ship. Uh, actually, according to the ship's manifest, there are some socks on board. Not helping, Car. See, there are socks on board. I'll bet you they're really nice ones, too. Well, duh. It's a luxury ship, like the captain said. Enough about the socks. What do you have against socks? Don't you like socks? Yeah. Don't you like them? I wish I could have a pair. But my kind don't wear them. Oh, I love me a good fuzzy sock. They feel so good on my toes. I l like toe socks. Oh, Dom, I bet we can find someone to make you special socks. You know, for lounging. Oh, that would be 
lovely. Oh, for the love of a oh, no, the socks! We're about to start the mission, and you're wasting the captain's time. Uh, sorry, sorry, Captain. captain. <laughs> it's okay. But back to the matter at hand. Don't try to steal anything else. We'll have our hands full with the crate as it is. According to our intel, it is being kept in cargo hold number five. Car, can you latch onto the Antaglio and create an entry point for us? Uh, yes, Captain. They won't even know we're connected. The Quasar Dragon sped up and curved about so that it could fly alongside the larger merchant vessel. With expert skill, Carr tilted the controls and let their fingers dance across the panels. Within minutes, the Quasar Dragon was where it needed to be. Cable shot out from the Quasar Dragon's hull and magnetically attached to the Antaglio. Once we start cutting through their hull, the merchant ship will be notified. You can expect some... Uh, heavy resistance, Captain? I wouldn't have it any other way. How close is the entry point to cargo hold number five? Exactly a hundred feet away from it, to the right. Myra, Ned, Dom, let's go over to the boarding tube. Once we have a way in, Dom and Ned, do what you do best. Ah, uh, you mean fart in their sleep? I don't think that's gonna help in this situation. Mostly because we're not asleep, Myra. Duh. Yeah. Duh. Uh. They have a point. They are indeed not asleep. <laughs> Whatever. Captain Okomasaki, Myra, Dom, and Ned moved over to the boarding tube. All together, they activated their space helmets. Energy shields surrounded their heads. Oko touched a small button along her helmet collar. Begin the boarding process. Beginning the boarding process now. Oko flexed her fingers and double-checked the readings and indicators on her gauntlets. Everything appeared to be operational. After a few moments, the door to the boarding tube slid open, revealing a small hallway leading to the Antaglio. Ned and Dom moved down the tube. As soon as they got to the corner, they peered around either side. Ned brought his rifle around and began firing it. Dom provided the backup. Oh, pirate's life for me! Ahoy! There are worse ways to make our lives memorable. Let's go! Oko and Myra sprinted down the boarding tube just as Dom and Ned advanced inside. The whine of energy weapon discharge pierced the air. Oko smelled the aroma of burnt molecules in the air. And she grinned. Come on, you call this defense? Pathetic! They are quite awful at this, aren't they? Oko peered around the corner and beheld the carnage. Blaster marks were on the floors, walls, and ceilings of the corridor. Armed security guards were hiding behind bulkheads and other beams, and they fired out when they could. However, both Ned and Dom advanced down the hallway fearlessly. They took cover when they needed to, but they advanced toward their destination, the Cargo 5 door. Myra sent out several blasts and then moved to get behind Dom. Oko thrusted her hands forward. A combined energy beam barreled out and nailed a guard in the chest. His armor melted and he grew still. The guard started to fall back and retreated further down the hallway. Ned managed to get beside the Cargo 5 doorway, but the glass door was closed. He crouched down and started removing the computer panel. Cover me! I'll open the door! Dom stood in front of Ned, reholstered his pistols, and started using Ned's rifle. Myra kept a look in the other direction. Oko placed her back against one of the walls, and she switched her attention in both directions. A view screen beside the Cargo 5 door came to life, and a weasley little man with a curly mustache stared angrily at them. His eyes narrowed. Who the hell do you think you are? What are you doing on my ship? Who are we? We're the Quasar Dragons, and you have something I want. The Quasar Dragons? <laughs> You're a bunch of pirates! Get off this ship now! We've already sent out a distress call to Galaxy Marshals. 
Oh, no! Not the Galaxy Marshals! That's right. They're on their way. And when they get here, you'll be sorry. Well, then we're gonna have to hurry, aren't we? Where are we with that door? Give me three more seconds. And there! The blast door opened wide. No! Those are Ryanite royal family's royal provisions. Get out of there, now! Okay, since you asked nicely. Wait, really? Oko blasted the video screen, and a shower of sparks danced out into the corridor. Dom, watch the corridor. Myra, Ned, we need to get that crate. Oko led the way into cargo hold number five. Large boxes with the words, handcrafted diamonds. Military technology, report to the Ryanite Royal Navy if stolen. And 1,000 thread count socks, the side up, were stacked in various places amidst the giant cargo hold. Aw, oh, a thousand thread counts? Uh. Focus! I will buy you socks once we get through this! And Dom too? Yes, Dom too. A shrill voice blasted out from the speakers above. Attention all hands! Attention all hands! Everyone, report to the armory and get your emergency issued assault rifles. Report down to cargo hold five and stop those pirates. That sounds serious. Ned, go help Dom. Myra and I will secure the crate and then we have to leave. Right, on it. Ned immediately stopped and sprinted back toward the entrance of the cargo hold. The whine of a firefight danced in the air like a melody. Myra and Oko darted through the stacks while Oko studied the piles. Okay, we're looking for a long rectangular crate about eight feet long, four feet high, and about three feet wide. It will be marked as party favors. Party favors? Why would they indicate that? What better way to hide a Ryanite royal family secret? After about six minutes of searching, Myra found it toward the back. There weren't any crates on it, but it rested on a hover lift by itself. Well, that's convenient and lucky. <laughs> we get a Ryanite Royal family secret and a free hover lift. How much do you want to bet the Lugheads will break it by playing with it? Come on, let's go. Oko and Myra pushed the hover lift to the entrance of the cargo hold. Both Ned and Dom were shooting out, but the amount of bolts coming at them was vastly overwhelming. Captain, we're pinned down. Do any of them have spacesuits? With helmets? Ha 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 ha! I love being a pirate! Windows? Windows! Ned and Dom started shooting the windows further down the hall toward where the legion of better armed security guards were at. At first, the energy bolt struck the windows, but then cracks started to form. When the glass busted, the air began to be sucked out rapidly. A few of the guards were sucked out into the vacuum of space. Emergency bulkheads began closing to mark off the areas where the glass had been shot. As soon as the closest door between them and the guards closed, Oko and the others sprinted toward the boarding tube. Once they were safely on board the Quasar Dragon, with the boarding tube closed and secure, Oko touched the button on her helmet collar. Car, detach and get us the hell out of here! Ned, Dom, go jump on the weapons array in case the Galaxy Marshals show up. I hope they do show up. I bet I can shoot down more than you can. You're on. Oh yeah, we're getting socks. We are? They ran down the corridor toward the bridge. Myra shook her head, but Oko couldn't help but smile. They pushed the crate to their own cargo hold. As soon as it was parked, Oko started to pry open the top. Now, let's see what the royal family is hiding. Oko removed the top cover and then looked upon what remained within. As soon as she saw it, her stomach dropped. She knew it. Goddess, damn it. She knew it. Myra stared with wide open eyes, obvious signs of confusion drowning out all other things. Please don't tell the others what's in here. Uh, uh, of course not, Captain, but, but I don't understand. Uh, uh, it, it, it. 
A large stasis pod was within the crate, an active pod that kept the individual within it in perfect hibernation. Oko stared angrily at the person. Captain, quick question, why does this person look uh, exactly like you? Only, um, only naked. This person doesn't just look exactly like me. It is me. What, what, what do you mean? And also, you said this was connected to the Ryanite royal family, and I'm, I'm, I'm... Wait. Oh, wait, are you? My dear first mate, that is a rather complicated story. A long story. Oko placed the lid back on the crate and then nailed it back in place. I don't think you will want to bear the burden of this truth about me and how the Ryanite royal family has stayed in power for so long. It'll be easier on you not to know. No, please, Captain, please let me know. Please, let me carry part of this burden with you. Are you sure? Once you know, your perspective on the galaxy as a whole, and even our life together will change forever. Yes! <sighs> okay. Here's the truth about the Ryanite royal family. I'm 